So, were you scarred from that? Good, so is my mother. What's up guys, welcome back to C Dick. Today we're making three and a half different types of Thanksgiving potatoes. The reason why I say we're making three and a half different the reason why we make three and a half different types of potatoes is because it's Thanksgiving and a lot of people come over, everyone has different preferences. It's just another reason why hanging out with your family is a pain in the ass. So we're gonna make a very easy, creamy, creamy mashed potatoes, a crispy potato, fondant potatoes, and a very special treat at the end. Also, I'd really appreciate it if you take a second to like this video and leave me a comment to let me know about your craziest Thanksgiving family story. But really, that's just a ploy to get the YouTube algorithms to work for me because my channel's getting supremely far. Before we jump into making our dishes, we need to skin the potatoes. Here I have Yukon Gold Potatoes. They're my top choice for all 3.5 dishes because they're delicious and they were on sale. There are several ways to skin a potato cat, like using a meat hammer. However, my personal favorite and most effective way is to bully my potatoes into a social potato black hole potato potato cheap, 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 cheap. until they lock themselves in a shower of scalding hot water. And while their skin may shed on the outside, they know it's the same old spud on the inside. Or you can use a peeler. Okay, recipe number one is a fondant potato. It's potatoes cut into cylinders, then roasted in chicken stock and thyme butter. Super classy. This is a good one to impress your older sister Carol and her new husband Pierre. She's always been two steps ahead of you, but not today, bitch. It's your time to shine. I went to Japan recently and acquired this knife. Their asking price was low. Just a few American delicacies like Slim Jims, pizza rolls, Dunkaroos, and my dog. I'm kidding. I didn't trade my dog to the Japanese for a kitchen knife. They don't do that. I traded with the Koreans. And there you have it. Nicely cylindrical potatoes. Don't ask me why they're supposed to be cylinders. It's just the way of the French. By the way, do not throw any of these extra potato pieces. We'll use them later. Okay, in a cast iron pan, turn your heat up to medium hot. You can also use a stainless steel pan, but being perfect is a lot of pressure. So I like my pan stained. It's been a while. Place your potatoes in and brown each side for about two to three minutes or until it's all golden and stuff. Then give them a nice flip. As you can see, my pan was too hot and parts of this looked burned, but this is nothing a little color correction can't fix. So golden, so brown. Next we season. Add a good pinch of salt and blackety crackety peps. Then a couple butter squares and some thyme. Turn down the heat to medium and let it soak in all that butter. At this point, add in chicken stock until the pan is filled at least three quarters of the way up the side of the potato. Let it simmer until it comes to a boil. If you put cold stock into the oven, it'll take forever to finish. That's not what she said. Now pop it into an oven at 425 degrees for 30 to 40 minutes. Those are me feet. Okay, these are done. Not too bad, right? I think they have character. Remove them from the pan and onto a plate. I'm gonna season it a little bit more and I also made a really quick sauce on the pan drippings. It's simple, just crank up the heat, add some flour to make a roux, and then add some more chicken stock. The last garnish I'm gonna add to top this whole thing off hasn't made an appearance since my oyster stuffing video last year. Fajita? Stupid parsley. Okay, this is all set. On to the next recipe. Next up is Uncle Bruce's crispy potatoes. And like the potatoes, Uncle Bruce is rigid and crunchy on the outside, but when it comes to the grandkids, he's a real softy on the inside. However, he's still indifferent when it comes to minorities. You want to cut these potatoes into large chunks. They will be much easier to work with as we go along. Also, knife tip. Cup your fingers like this and use them as a guide for the knife when cutting anything. Safety first. Okay, perfect. These are cut. In a pot of boiling water, add in some salt and baking soda. I ran out of baking soda, so just pretend I got baking soda! Add your potatoes and then boil them for 10 minutes or until the knife easily runs through them. Then strain them out, let them chill for a minute while we prepare our herb butter. Here we have nice chunks of butter and some olive oil. I'm adding in chopped garlic and rosemary. We're gonna toast these herbs and some salt until golden brown. Then strain out the oil and separate it, but keep the herb crispies for later. Okay, next we're gonna go back to the potatoes and give it a good shake. The key to crispy potatoes is to have textured edges. Smooth edges don't crispy, hence the shake. This is important, don't screw this up. Next, mix your potatoes into the oil and coat every nook and cranny with the buttery goodness. Now grab a baking sheet, add a little oil so it doesn't stick, and paint it on like Jack does for those French girls. Jack, I want you to draw me like one of your French girls. Then plop your potatoes on and spread them out evenly. This is important. If they're touching, they won't get crispy. Pop in the same oven at ah! 425 degrees for 30 minutes. Oh, shit. Okay, I just took it out. These are not done yet. You still need to flip them. Look at the bottom. How delicious is that? Once you're done flipping, pop them back in the oven for another 10 to 15 minutes. You can now remove these and mix them in the bowl with the crispy garlic and rosemary for additional flavor. Also, season to taste. Then just throw them on a plate and you're good to go. Check out that crunch. 
Okay, potato recipe number three, the creamiest mashed potatoes ever. This one is for the nieces and nephews at your Thanksgiving dinner because it's the easiest thing you can spoon feed those rat faced bastards that haven't put that iPad down since they came out of the womb. First, we take a few potatoes and cut them into small chunks. Don't worry about size here, it doesn't matter. Or at least that's what I keep telling myself. Now add those potatoes to a bag because we're gonna sous vide this. Also, I'm adding some chopped garlic, rosemary, a whole stick of butter, and some milk. One drag for the taters, and one drag for all my fallen vegan homies. Lastly, add in those extra chunks of potatoes that you cut off when making those potato cylinders. See? It all comes full circular. Seal it up and try to push most of the air out and give it a quick shake. Then put the bag in a pot of water with your sous vide machine set to 194 degrees. Sous vide is the best way to go for ultimate creaminess. If you don't have a sous vide, you can buy mashed potatoes from Boston Market. Put it in a timeout in your bedroom for at least one hour so we can think about what he did. To check if the potatoes are done, they should smash easily when you press them. To achieve ultimate creaminess, you need to strain these potatoes through a level 10 mesh sieve and then a level 60 mesh sieve. The level 10 breaks it down and the level 60 purees it. Lucky for you, I have neither. So we're gonna pretend that I have bougie kitchen tools and that this is a real cooking show and ignore the fact that I switched to a potato ricer while I distract you with Amazon screenshots of professional sieves. Look at those results, it's amazing. Now I'm gonna add salt, blackity crackity, and sour cream. Sour cream is optional but recommended. Also a bunch of chives. Now mix it all together until it's nice and smooth. So there you have it guys, three different types of potatoes for every character in the family. Usually this is the part where I eat all these in front of you and I give you a comprehensive review, but you've been watching potatoes for like 10 minutes now so I'll keep it simple. It's delicious! Lastly, I mentioned three and a half potato recipes. Well, the last one here is for your own child. You know, the one that doesn't look anything like you and complains nonstop. So you know what you get Thatcher? You get a regular uncooked potato right out of the bag. Eat the potato. Eat the potato, eat the potato, eat the potato, eat the potato. You sniffling little sh We had you to save our marriage, but now I just resent you. <laughs> That's it for today, guys. Make sure you look at Follow me everywhere at Cheese It As A Cooking. If you don't know what look means, it basically means to leave me a like, a comment, a share, and maybe even a subscribe because I'm dead inside. <laughs> no, but really, it helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. I've said that twice now. I am desperate. Guys, I watch a lot of YouTube, and some of my favorite content is the tech reviewers. What I've noticed recently is everyone seems to be reviewing these AirPod Pros, and the second that they put them on, they seem to be enamored with the fact that the noise canceling is working fantastically <laughs>